Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is the middle of the week. I haven't ran in probably over a week now. My left knee has been bugging me, so uh, I've just tried to stay off of it. Put some KT tape on it, as you saw in the last video. Been wearing a knee brace around. It's feeling a little bit better, so we're just gonna go out, have ourselves a nice, short little run. Uh, maybe a mile or two, just kind of get the juices flowing again. Uh, nothing too crazy, nothing too strenuous, not part of any plan or anything like that. It's just going out and just logging a couple miles just to call it a day. So happy Wednesday. Hopefully you guys are having a great day and hopefully you enjoy this video. So uh, later on after my run, I'm going to sit down and go over everything that the training plan had in it, right? So every little nuance of it. I'm not going to get totally down into the weeds, but kind of break down the weeks for you and kind of give you an overall view of how that workout went. So stick around if you want to see how that training plan goes, maybe get some ideas for your own training plan. And uh, we'll see you after the run, guys. Take care. there you have it guys that was it for the run this morning 3.4 miles I just let loose you know <clears throat> got a little yeah in the throat haven't ran like that in a little while so uh, felt good to get out knee started bugging me a little bit on the way back uh, but nothing nothing crazy so should be fine just got to put the uh, the brace back on today when I get back inside but now we're down for a little bit of a cool down, a little walk to get the heart rate back down a little bit. Pretty much, I think I was in zone four and five the whole time. So uh, really let it go today. But like I said, that's it for the run. Stay tuned, because I am gonna go over the run plan completely. Uh, what each week had in store and kind of my thoughts on the overall plan. So if that interests you, stick around and uh, wait till the end. All right, guys. All right, everybody, so I am in the house. Run's all done. We got the cup of coffee. We're ready to go. We got some notes on the computer over here about the whole run program uh, that I did through Garmin. So it was a beginner heart rate based uh, 5K prep plan, training plan. And it was a 12 week program. Um, a real, real basic, 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 almost, not almost, it was a couch to 5k um, training plan. The only thing you ne needed for it was a watch and a heart rate monitor. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Garmin. I just happen to have a Garmin watch. And so I have the Garmin heart rate monitor as well. So week one of this training plan was all about just getting moving, getting outside, um, getting the heart rate elevated. Uh, a little, not a lot, you know, it was very, very slow at the beginning. Uh, in the beginning, I had a lot of issues with the heart rate monitor pairing with the phone or with the watch or battery issues, all sorts of stuff going on with the heart rate monitor that I had. I had the blue uh, Garmin heart rate monitor, the triathlon one, uh, which later got replaced right after Christmas with the, uh, the HRM Pro. So. Uh, week two, so if I look over, I'm looking down at my notes here. Week two was more of the same as week one. Just a little bit longer runs and a little bit longer rest time in between. Uh, kind of getting into the intervals, starting there. Uh, for me, it wasn't really much of a run, but I think that had to do also with the heart rate monitor uh, not functioning properly there. 
Uh, week T, week, week T, week three was the same as week two, basically. Uh, but we started doing actual intervals uh, for 10 to 15 minutes in zone two. So um, building up, right? So we start down low, building. Each week is a building block, building up and up and up and up. So uh, week four was the first time we actually got into zone three on the heart rates. So the first three weeks, it was all about zone two. No zone three whatsoever, zone two, zone two, zone two, zone two. Once we got to week four, that's when we finally got into zone three. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with the zones, it was all based off of your max heart rate, which you can take 220 minus your age, and that will give you a very basic max heart rate. So for example, 220 minus my age, 45, that puts me at 175. So theoretically, my max heart rate is 175. And then the zones are broken down into 10% increments. So 100% is zone 5, 100% or more is zone 5. Uh, zone 4 would be uh, 80 to, or 90 to 100, 90 to 99. And then zone 3 would be 80 to 89. Zone 2, let's see, did I do that right? 5, 4, 3, 2, you get the idea. So zone 5 is 100% and above. Zone four is 90 to 99, zone three is 80 to 89, zone two is 70 to 79, and zone one is 60 to 69% of your max heart rate. So zone five uh, was the first time we got into zone four, doing some more intervals. Uh, we had a couple easy runs, um, and I gotta say, being that this was the first time that we got into zone four, it felt great for me. I remember the first uh, time I did it, man, what a great feeling getting back up into that speed there and getting the heart rate up. And Because the first few weeks just felt like a slog, you know, just bleh, bleh, real low and slow. Uh, but again, this is a couch to 5K program. It's meant to take somebody that just sits at home, hasn't ran a 5K maybe ever or at least in a couple of years and gets them back on that path of being more active. So uh, week six, uh, was the same as week five, just a little longer in zone four and a little shorter rest periods in between the two. So we're building up that endurance, building up the aerobic base, building up the threshold that we can run at. So uh, week seven was a recovery week. Now it's important every four to six weeks in your running plan that you work in a recovery workout week. What that is going to do for you is it's going to give your, your body a chance to rest up and to recover and to heal and to basically get itself digested from all of the previous workouts you've done. Kind of takes a little break and then that way when you come back at it after that recovery week, you are ready to rock and roll and crush that workout on the next work uh, next week. So. Uh, make sure you have your recovery weeks in there. Helps prevent injuries. Uh, it builds your stamina, believe it or not, because your body is recovering from everything. So get those rest weeks, recovery weeks in there. Now, recovery week doesn't mean don't run at all. It just means you're not running at a like intervals. You're not doing high speed intervals. You're not doing very long runs. It's all very low, very slow and calculated runs. Week eight was back to uh, intervals, and it was the first time they introduced a new workout, which I called a ladder workout. So you'd start off at zone two, go to zone three, go to zone four, and then back down. Uh, that was really fun because it you know, keeps your mind occupied while you're running, like, hey, how much more time do I have in this zone? Oh man, look at your watch. You're like, oh cool, I got like another 30 seconds in this zone, and then I can speed up a little bit. Or if you're in zone four, man, now I can slow back down and catch my breath a little bit. So uh, week nine was the same as week eight. Just more, you know, longer runs, longer time in zone four. Uh, there was another ladder workout in there. And what these ladder workouts do is, that, like I said, they build your body awareness of your pace. So zone two pace is going to be a lot different than zone three and a lot different than zone four, obviously, because you're you're running faster. So getting your body to feel and recognize what zone you're in 
is crucial because come race day, you may not be looking at your watch. You get all that adrenaline. You go out like super crazy fast. And then after the first mile or so, you look down and you're like, oh, shoot, I'm running way too fast. And you blow up and you don't have a good race. So knowing what your body feels like when you're in those different zones is key to having a good, good race. Uh, week 10, uh, just building off of week nine, increasing time on the feet in the different zones. Um, this was actually the first time we were out over an hour. We had one hour workout and that was our long run. Um, it was just a long run of one hour in zone two, if I remember correctly. So, um, me personally, I love going out and running long, long distances and having fun and just being out there forever. But, uh, some people just don't like it. So you might be thinking, well, why do I need to run an hour if I'm doing a 5k? I should be able to do a 5k in less than an hour. And you're right. You should, uh, you know, if you're, if you're walking at a brisk pace, you should be able to finish a 5k in about an hour if you're in a brisk pace but most everybody's going to be running it so most everybody will be able to finish after uh an hour or before an hour so why would you go out for an hour well the thing the thought behind that is if you can go an hour you can run the whole 5k right makes sense so if you can go out and you can run an hour and stay in zone two for the whole thing you can run a 5k you may not have a pr but you will stay in zone two for that whole 5k and not have any problem but it's also building endurance in zone two endurance aerobic base whatever you want to call it it is by staying in zone two for that hour it is building that it is putting more fuel in your tank so that come race day you can go out and you can have a great boy race uh, week 11 was uh, intervals, a ladder workout, and a recovery run. Heading into the final week, it was like the last big push of the workout. Um, getting into zone four a lot more often. Um, just more time on feet, right? So all we're doing is, again, just building, 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 getting into race prep. So then comes week 12, which is the uh, race week. So our first workout is an interval. That's our last big workout. And then it was just a couple short recovery runs after that leading into the race. So what you wanna do when you're planning out a 5K race or any race for that matter is you wanna have your race date, right? You know exactly when it is, let's say it's Thursday. So that week leading up to it, you don't wanna do any major workouts within seven days of that race. And then all you want to do within those seven days is just get a couple recovery runs in, keep the legs moving, keep everything turning over so that you don't overwork yourself. You have a chance to get that body to recover and to get ready for race prep and race day. So my, my thoughts on this plan is it was a great starter plan, a great five couch to 5k plan. Anybody and their brother can definitely do this run, do this workout. Uh, like I said, minimal equipment, you need a watch and a heart rate monitor that will talk to each other. You can usually find them on Amazon um, for like 40 bucks, I think it is, maybe 50 now. But uh, Polar makes a great one. Uh, I had a Polar watch heart rate combo um, many, many, many years ago and it worked great. No problems, no issues or anything like that with it. So um, I would totally recommend this plan to anybody that's thinking about getting started and running thinking about going out and making a 5k for the first time uh it's a great training program uh it's not daunting you know there's nothing magical about it it's not super crazy there's no crazy workouts in this whole thing you know the craziest is, are the ladder workouts but once you get your mind wrapped around what you're doing and you look over everything it's not a bad workout whatsoever um other than that, guys, uh, I noticed that I've been talking for a while. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below in the comment section. Um, again, if you're looking for a 5K training plan, go back and watch the whole series. You'll get all the workouts that I did in this. Uh, again, I'm just following the Garmin plan. They're a dime a dozen out on the internet as far as workout plans. Uh, if you're looking for specific help with a plan, Hit me up, leave a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Uh, but other than that, man, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this series. 
Moving forward, I will be doing some more runs. I just don't have anything 100% set yet. So the next week or two, I'll probably just be doing some real easy runs, just kind of seeing what's out there, see if I can find a race or something to prepare for. So uh, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. All the love and support is greatly appreciated. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, the subscribe, and the bell notification. And always, you can follow me on Instagram, the Gingy Runner at Instagram. So follow, give me a follow, like, comment, and share. Uh, spread the word, guys. Let's grow this ship to over 100 viewers or subscribers. That way, I can put a custom URL in my YouTube link. That would be kind of cool. So thanks again for watching, guys. And until next time, run happy. <laughs>